We are in a state of emergency. Tragedy. Want to show about it? Like the here? Here go. Shouting you out. That's that's what that's my inspiration. 
situation. I'm so sister D. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the people who helped to the medical provider for my own kids a week. And it has meant so much to us that you would help because of how you guys and this life would not be possible and you would not be with you today already. Right? And I just want to say for all of you that helped and that donated, I will be with you guys with a big thanks. And I hope I can meet you in there and say thank you in person. I love you guys. And Everybody who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy to accomplish this job overnight. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. We want to make sure that we're not just working to be first, but we're working to be right. A lot of times there are situations when things are just happening so fast. It's always important to be fast, but we always want to be right. My brother Angel Snuff Knob 7 at the Reality Simple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snub Nub 7's videos, I think that um, he comes a different angle. And there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from. And I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the Black Supremacy Movement as well. And I have nothing against that, because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. Welcome to the Reality Stuff on Earth. 
My name is Jeroen, and uh, I would like to say that Angel Scott Smithson isn't a racist at all. He's a good friend. Himself, and you don't realize it. You don't realize it, that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So why do you stop your own self? Your God self has been in prison, and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why... You understand what I'm saying? You, yes, you have to bring reality temple here on earth. Reality <laughs> temple here on earth because yes, we have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple. How do you guys feel about Sherry Axe on Brown and like that with her album? Um, because that was cool. She's cute. She's cute. That's all I got to say. She's cute. She's cute. Thanks, son. She came out with a different attitude. I feel like I'm glad to be. That's old school. Life has changed. Wait, who was that? Um, Mr. T did in Rocky. Who was that? Uh, Rocky Three. Was it Rocky Three? Put the girls on my first. There we go. I don't have a lot to say. Come and see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, Ron. I trust that feeling. Does anybody have any questions of me before I get out of here? Let's see what you guys are saying. What's up, Soul Sister Rona? Hey, Telly. I'm the brother that did my uh, Mike Jackson in Tunica, uh, Mississippi. Hey, now. Uh, hello to Terry. Respect. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Come and see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, Ron. Terry. It's important for the black youth, especially to know that that we did have a history and that we did great things and that we had great people. And those things were not in the history books when I was in school. And um, what I'd like to be doing five years from now is attempting to rewrite the history books so that they'll know that. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please, please do subscribe to the channel. He's a, he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to, he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. We're talking about not falling into the teacher trap, not falling into the website trap. So today, what teachers can you learn from? We just told you that the Akawu tells you that we're all a great teacher at the same time. So who are you going to learn from? You're going to learn from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives of people like Brother Polite. The positives and negatives of people like Sarah Sun said. You're going to learn from Maurice Mahan, Talik even Rob. You're going to learn from Netterkett. You're going to learn. You're definitely going to learn from King Noble. You're definitely going to learn a little something, something from Brother Daku. Morals are just, you know, subjective. But when you have laws and things on paper that say, if you do this, we're going to punish you by incarcerating you.
and you break them and you're dumb enough to get caught, then you're just dumb. All right, all right. Shout out to Reality's Tip on the bill. Just from us, I got to get him on here, man. You talk about somebody polarizing. Whoa. <laughs> that brother, that brother, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Shout out to the brother, no, Jeff.
In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. angel snuff nuff seven, I am your soul brother, number one. Before we get into our topic, and I don't expect a lot of traffic on this video because of the subject matter, but I welcome those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast at a later time, it is always an honor for us to come before you that you would give us a few moments of your time as time is very important. So it is an honor that you would allow us your ear for just a few minutes. Shout out to our viewer, Mellow Cap, in the chat room, and perhaps the deacons will be here later. But however, as they say in show business, the show must go on. Also, this show, which of course we don't consider it a show, this word continues whether there is zero or a thousand listening. The word moves on. Soul power moves on regardless. And I will represent that soul power until the breath of life has been taken from my lungs. Because I feel the power, I feel the life, and there's a need for others to also be connected with life. We want to talk about that in these few minutes. <clears throat> Before we get into our talk, I want to make just a few announcements and answer some slight uh, inquiry. <clears throat> First of all, I am pleased to say that finally we've been able to give our brother Omar Shabazz, our brother who is most known for his documentaries on Malcolm X, we finally been able to give him the footage to his qualifications that he asked of us to do because all those involved, this brother wanted, Angel Snubbed Up Seven, wanted Brother Ta Talik to be in his next eight hour documentary Malcolm X, A Diamond Among Men. The first time we did the footage, 
I was not feeling well. We were in a bad place. And Brother Omar was not feeling the first footage that we submitted to him. But now that is over, and I'm so happy. Brother Omar Shabazz is a perfectionist, as I am a perfectionist. And now we just wait for the editing and all those involved submit what they need to so this documentary can become a reality hopefully sometime this year it's an eight hour documentary malcolm x a diamond among men so we need to look out for that from brother omar shabazz later this year also as many of you know We've finally been able to publish our autobiography. It is available now on Amazon, Amazon Kindle, and you can get the paperback. It is our autobiography entitled In the Grip of Monsters being falsely accused of stalking serial killer Anthony Marlon Ross. Now you can go to Amazon and the link is in the description box, also in the chat room. You can go to Amazon and purchase the autobiography, $9.99 on Kindle, and $49.95 on, uh, for paperback. Also, for those who donate $5 or more cash out, I would be happy to send you the rough draft, but I have to know you because the reason why I wanted the, um, price to be sort of expensive i do not want my uh, enemies those who don't like me to be able to get a hold of our product and they don't pay a price so if i know you and you only have two five bucks if i know you i can send you the rough draft but if you just want to support the book, Amazon Kindle, and the information is in the description box, $9.99 on Kindle and $49.95 for the paperback. I want to make this perfectly clear. I'm not trying to nor do I want to, or did I write the autobiography in some effort to make money? I don't care about that. That was not the purpose. The purpose was because this has been requested of me for years and years and years. But I really found no reason to attempt and also i was just tired all that um legal fighting that i did for 10 straight years with the state of missouri it just wore me out i was not in the mood to write nothing i was just tired but now that so much time has passed and now there's there's a sort of of a uh, conclusion to the story and because my sister, Rashida Strober, the uh, world's first dark skin activist, asked me to uh, 
put my story down on paper. Then I decided to take the time and not only speak about my unjust incarceration, but also my life in general, as I thought it might be interesting and that many of you may be able to relate to my story. Also being an older person, <laughs> I don't expect to live too much longer anyway. So I want to just put my story out there so that it may be examined. Also, if time permit, I have an idea for another book I would like to present. Which shouldn't take me that long because really it's already been written. It's just needs to be put down on paper. I did put my heart and my soul into this biography to try to keep it as honest and real. Whether it makes me look bad or good, it makes no difference. I'm telling the story to the best of my ability as truthfully and honestly as I can tell the story. I thank all of you who have encouraged me to write this autobiography. I thank all of you who will support this biography, no matter which form you choose. Again, it is for us. It is for those who support real truth, those who understand soul power, those who understand soul brother number one, those who understand the vision and the purpose and the goal of what we represent here at what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Also, we've been talking to our brother Astro Boo Baby, and we do want to work with Astro, Astro, Astro Boo Baby on uh, this single that was inspired by Michael Jackson. I would like to work with him on that because it was, and it did come to me in a dream, not once, not twice. And there is a spiritual side and I think that, well, I know that Astro Boo Baby is the best person in order to produce this record. So when we combine our talents together, I think it would be something once released, it's going to really put us on the map. If not, this autobiography, if I can get it, into the right hands or the right people see this autobiography. The sky's the limit. We don't know what will happen until we cast the line and put it in the water and see if we can get a bite. We might get a little minnow or we might catch a big whale. We don't know. We're just going to cast the line and see. Now, I would like to uh, briefly address a few comments.
And perhaps some of you may already know, but we're going to go over this real quick. I do not pray. We do not pray here because we are not a servant to nobody. There is no God for us here. Now, I did learn from the nation of Islam when we reach out our hand in front of us, this is a symbol to humble ourselves to God. For me, it is a symbol that I humble myself in respect to those who come before me. Not seeking their guidance, not praying to them, only giving them honor in the name of my ancestors. And then we raise our hands from that symbol to the symbol of those who take martial arts classes. You know, this is a symbol of respecting your opponent. So we are humble and we respect the ancestors. We are not praying to nobody. There is nobody to pray to. We are acknowledging the memory of those who are no longer with us. They cannot help us. They have no power. In fact, they could not do anything for themselves. So how are they going to help us? We learn from their mistakes. We learn from their success. In the name of my ancestors. So I were an ancestor Right here, Brother Malcolm X. I am not a follower of Malcolm X. I am not a student of Malcolm X. I bought this pen for $10, I believe in 2010. Minister Louis Farrakhan's second in command, Brother Akbar Muhammad. It was a long meeting, and he was invited to be the keynote speaker at this gathering to honor Malcolm X. And he told the FOI, I know you had a long day. You don't have to go with me. Now, it is the duty of the fruit of Islam. It's the duty of the fruit of Islam to, to secure Minister Farrakhan as well as the top officials. But Brother Akbar gave them a choice because it was a long day. Like from uh, 1.30, 1 o'clock, all the way to 5.30, 6 o'clock that evening. And then he was going to run to do this next meeting at 7.30 or 8 o'clock, whatever it was. The FOI, the fruit of Islam, decided they was done. They went home. So I told Brother Akbar, I'm going to go with you. And I went with him to this Malcolm X celebration, I will be your security. And an older brother and an older sister was there and a, and a brother that was handicapped that I knew from back in the day, he was there. The fruit of Islam did not secure their second in command. I was there. I told him, I got your back. And so while I was there, 
I saw this button and I like the button. I donated $10 for the button. It's my button and I will wear it because I bought it. You pieces of trash. I like Malcolm X. because he was dead wrong to me. So I can feel and I can relate to Brother Mac. The reason why I like Involve is because these sisters to me was ripped off by the music industry. So I can feel that. I can feel and I connect to people who have been done wrong. I myself, I was locked up unjustly in the Department of Mental Health. So I can feel and I can relate to those who have suffered being done unfair, injustice. I can feel that. I agree with much of what Malcolm said, but Malcolm X was a Muslim at the time. And I do not agree, and we reject religion and spirituality here. The wisdom of Malcolm X, it stopped in 1965. February the 21st, 1965, when the Nation of Islam gunned that poor man down in front of his wife and children, that was the end of his knowledge. There was many things, a lot of information, Malcolm X never had an opportunity to comprehend or examine. His knowledge stopped in 1965. So if I follow Malcolm X, then my thinking process stopped in 1965. This is why these cannot progress because they're following people who are dead and their knowledge stopped in 1975. Elijah Muhammad stopped, died in 1975. That's the end of his knowledge. Marcus Garvey is gone. It stopped when he died. And you have all these people who are following dead folks. When you die, you come to a stop. Means you don't move no more. Whenever, wherever you bury or create, cremate a person and throw their ashes, that's where it stops. When you want to go to the graveyard to visit a loved one, you know exactly where to go because that, that body is not going to go nowhere. You're going to expect that body unless somebody else move it, move it. Wherever you buried your loved one or your cat or your dog, that's where that body is going to be. That's where it stopped. But when you are alive, when you have movement, Life continues. But when you die, that's a stop. So Malcolm, I respect Malcolm. But it came to an end. So the new information, the new examination, Malcolm never had an opportunity to expound, never had a chance to analyze 
the new. His thinking process stopped in 1965. So I don't follow Malcolm X. Only honor and respect him, no more, no less. And I feel for him He was taken from us too soon for stupid reasons. All right. So we got that out the way. We don't follow dead people here. I want you to be alive. You don't stop because I stop. Because you're alive. Living things grow. Living things evolve. The dead decompose. The, the dead rots. So when you look at, at so many of these people around us, they're vulgar. They're nasty, they're greedy, they rot, they're decomposing. And in your scriptures, it acts or talks about us walking in the valley of the shadow of death. And wherever you find death, you find something that is rotten, something that's decomposing, that which no longer has life. Although I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. That's a lie. Even though you believe in God, you lock your door. You put on your burglar alarm. You buy a gun. You carry a knife. You carry mace because you fear, you fear evil. Walk in the valley of the shadow of death. Because you don't have no faith in your God because deep down inside, you know your damn God don't exist. That's why. Actions speak louder than words. Well, God didn't tell us to be stupid. You said that your God has all this power. You say that your God will protect you. So what the hell you need your gun for? Or your knife or your mace or lock your door. Because you walk in the valley of the shadow of death and you do fear evil. And since we on this platform accept the reality of things, hell yeah, I'm going to carry a gun. Hell yeah, I'm going to carry mace. Hell yeah, I'm going to carry a knife. Hell yeah, I'm going to lock my door. Hell yeah, I'm going to have a burglar alarm. Because I walk in the valley of the shadow of death and I ain't a damn fool. We're not going to bring you that nonsense. And if God helps, helps us, hey, that's cool. But we're not going to depend on no God to do a damn thing. In recent events, we want to take a look back. And I want to say that it brings us no joy. I am not happy. I feel no joy. I'm not glad. None of these things. It is really a sad time. It is really a hurting time. We do not hate nobody. I don't. I can't speak for nobody. Else. I don't hate nobody. 
I don't dislike nobody. In fact, we exhibit the attributes of those of whom you claim believe in Jesus, even though you've done evil unto us, we can still show you mercy and we can still show you compassion. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. What we just experienced in recent events, this is what happens when we put our trust in falsehood. We put our trust in lies. When we become emotional and emotion causes us not to think clearly. Emotion causes us to make bad decisions and behave in an inappropriate manner. So we had no choice but to defend ourselves and we defended ourselves not speaking about how long a penis is or or uh, some other factor or, or uh, you got a cheap invo post on the wall. We defended this platform with reality. We defended this platform with truth and undeniable evidence. And we did such a good job that there were those coming here to tell us, leave the provocateurs, leave the ones, the aggressors, leave them alone. Because they could see that everything they were throwing at us was failing. And they felt sorry for the ones in the wrong. Why would you do that? This is our problem. We always stand with those who are wrong or in error. So you do them a disservice because they feel they were right. And with all our truth, with all our undeniable evidence, they will continue to walk wrong because we support them in their error. You support them in their wrong. How many people since 2007, how many people have tried to expose Angel Snup Nup 7? I have not done anything to you. We allow you in this house. We trusted you. And all you did was take. You did very little giving, if nothing at all. You betrayed our trust and you stabbed us in the back. You went out and gathered every enemy you think would have a problem with Angel Snap Number Seven. You gathered all of them together like the Legion of Doom, and all of you come hurling your lies and your falsehood and your assumptions and all this at us. But see, we are we are righteous people. And I don't have to believe in no God. But I stand on a righteous platform because I know I have not done a damn thing to you. So you begin to hurl your lies and your deception. And it just bounced off us. 
like a bulletproof vest. You thought if you keep throwing stuff, something was going to stick. The problem is, if it's falsehood and it's deception and outright lies, nothing is going to stick to this vest. And that's what we saw. Why do you think we as black men and women, so brothers and sisters in this country, why can't we progress? Because we support mythology, delusions, and fairy tales. We all in our emotions. Keep throwing stuff at the wall, hoping it will stick. It's not going to stick because it's not real. It's not, it's not real. So you keep playing games with life, and life moves forward while you steady playing in the graveyard. And other people, coming across the border today progress faster than you do. People coming all the way from South America come across the border and they are progressing, building themselves. And you still way behind. And you get jealous of them. There's no reason for us to be in the condition that we're in. It ain't the white man's fault. It's not the people from South America, the immigrants' fault, the Chinese or the Arabs or the Africans. It's our fault. Because we want to live in delusions and fantasy, hoping that some God alien or whatever come out the sky come save you let's talk about this let's let's do this and get out of here all right let's use this as an example a baby bird a baby bird comes into being because of, of the father and the mother. The mother bird lays the egg, the egg hatches, and you have a baby bird. The baby bird is a totally different life than mama and daddy. The mother and father caused the baby bird to come into existence, but there is no longer a connection. Once the egg comes out of the mother bird and that egg hatches, there's no longer a physical connection. The baby bird to its mother and father. It's a brand new life. Brand new. And so mother and father feeds the baby. I want y'all to follow. I want you to follow us. You know why? Because we are we are spiritual without being spiritual. We are righteous. By being righteous. <laughs> we are Pan-African without being Pan-African, if you understand. We're pro-black without being pro-black, if you understand. They don't understand. So you have this baby bird that is now on their own. And so the baby bird begins to grow and develop feathers. 
baby birds, are, most of them are blind. They can't see. So the baby bird begins to see and the baby bird begins to grow feathers. The baby bird cannot stay a baby bird. Sooner or later, the baby bird must leave the nest, right? The baby bird just don't leave the nest. The baby bird climbs on top of the nest and flaps his or her wings, getting strong, getting ready for flight. And I've, I have seen this myself, so I know what I'm talking about. I watch the baby birds in the trees and they flapping their wings. And then they take, they take test flights. They'll jump out the nest and they fly to a branch, fly from branch to branch. Next thing you know, the baby bird has left the building. This is nature. This is life. So what are you saying? Why are you using this as an example? I'm using this as an example. Ah, oh, you should know. Since y'all so smart, you so dead, y'all spiritual. You should easily know where I'm going with this. But the reason why you don't understand is because you should be well beyond where you're at. I'm, we're going to talk about it. Look. Follow me. Follow me. Now, according to religious teaching, we are called the children of the most high. We are called the children of God. We're children. We are the baby bird. In a nest. And we are separated from God. Like that baby bird is separated from his or her mother or father. We're separated. No. So the baby bird is in the nest. Flapping his wings, getting stronger and stronger because pretty soon the baby bird knows I got to be on my own. I can't stay in this nest forever. If God or the most high is the parent then one day as children of God we got to grow up we have to leave the nest so that adult baby bird once the baby bird becomes an adult whatever the parents can do that big whoo that baby bird can do if we are children of the most high, if we are children of God, when we grow up, as we begin to evolve, when we begin to mature, then we are to become God. Whatever that God can do, we can do it when we grow up. But if the baby bird cannot grow and just lay around in a nest, the baby bird has to depend on mama bird, daddy bird to come, bring worms and bugs or whatever because the baby bird can't do for him or herself. But the purpose of the parents is to teach that baby, feed that baby, 
so that baby can evolve and grow so that baby can be an adult bird and leave the nest. Not stay in the nest, leave the nest. So it says in your scriptures, it talks about the Jesus and the miracles and the powers of the Jesus but after the teacher Jesus left I am told that the apostles many of them performed the same miracles that Jesus see y'all don't talk about that if you notice they don't talk about that why don't you talk about the apostles also developing the powers that Jesus had. You don't talk about that. What's the sense of Jesus being a teacher and his students don't learn a damn thing? What's the sense of somebody teaching you about car repair and you can't fix a car. What's the sense of somebody teaching you martial arts and you can't break a board? What the teacher has failed. Whoever is teaching you Christianity, who is whoever is teaching you about being a Hebrew Israelite or a Pan African or a Muslim, all these disciplines that we embrace but you have yet to apply what you learned, that teacher has failed. You are still in a nest waiting for some a mama bird and a daddy bird to come feed you when you should now be in a position to feed yourself, to become God, to become Jesus, to go beyond Jesus. To become Elijah Muhammad, to go beyond Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, Dr. Francis Wilson. The teacher or the parents always want their babies to be better than them. But you're not. You're trying to be like them or less than them and put them in a godlike position. And the only thing you want to do is suck on their bosom. You want to remain in the nest. You don't want to grow up. You don't want to flap your wings and take a test flight. I'm very sure it's very scary for the baby bird to take that test flight because if you don't fly good, you go, you fall into the ground, which many of us know, and we've seen baby birds on the ground. That's a long way to drop. And that's your problem. You are afraid to grow up. You are afraid to be God. You are afraid to be a leader in the world. You are afraid to take care of yourself. So when we present to you the Mississippi campaign, it throws you for a loop. Because the only ones who can do the Mississippi campaign is grown folks, not children, adults, those who can fly, who is beyond flapping their wings, those who have left the nest. So of course, you don't understand Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign because you're still in the nest. 
the nest of Marcus Garvey, the nest of Elijah Muhammad, class 13X, the, the, the nest of Martin Luther King, or you still in the nest and your parents are dead. Elijah is gone, Malcolm is gone, Marcus Garvey is gone. All our people are gone and even and even when they were alive, they couldn't get you out of the nest. Still there, blind, deaf and dumb. Flapping your wings, you can't go nowhere. Scared to leave the nest. If you really believe in God, God will get you out of the nest. We understand God here. We ready to get out of the nest and fly. We might fall to the ground, but we are gonna get up and flap our wings some more and get up in the trees. And we're gonna fly. No more in the nest. Those who believe in God, those who believe in the Most High, think they are smarter than us. But you're not. Because we bring independence here. While you talk about being dependent on a God, we talking about not only obtaining knowledge, how to apply the knowledge. You have lots of knowledge, a lot of scholarship. You know about a lot of stuff. But clearly you don't know how to apply. You cannot apply until you get out of the nest. You don't need knowledge in a nest. You don't need scholarship in a nest. You need scholarship and knowledge once you get out into the world and flap your wings and fly. But then you don't know how to apply. God wants us to be independent. The parents of that baby bird wants that baby to get out of the nest and be independent, do for yourself. I question a belief, I question a, a doctrine that keeps us in the nest, that keeps us lazy and dependent on some body or some parent. You are the same people who will make mockery of a person that's 19, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and they still live in their parents' home. You're the people that will make mockery. Oh, you still living with your mama. You, you're a grown man still living with your mama. Why are you making mockery? You're making mockery because we know that our parents are supposed to raise us to a certain point and then our parents want us to go out into the world and do and live our life the way we feel we should live our life. They want to get us out of the nest. Not because, not because they hate you, because you are now independent of them and they're not gonna be around forever. They wanna make sure that you get a good send off in life. And you wonder about people who are 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 
still live with their parents. Because there, you should want to do your own thing. You should want to be independent. And if God created all of this, if the Most High created all of this, why would the Most High, why would God want to treat us any different? Wouldn't the Most High or God, wouldn't they want us to be better and greater than them? Unless, unless, unless your God is a tyrant. And you do have parents like that. You have parents that want to keep you at home because they want you to work on the farm. They want you to keep taking care of them. They don't want you to go nowhere. Maybe, maybe your God, that's the purpose of your God. Your God is a slave driver. Your God is a slave owner, a dictator and a tyrant. Because a good parent wants you to be able to take care of yourself and express your power. If we came from the most high, if we came from God, then if God created the heavens and the earth, we should be able to do it too, unless somebody told us a damn lie. Unless we was lied to. And I'm telling you, we were lied to. You listen to these teachers and these preachers and you look up to them like they are special. You and I have a connection to the universe just like they do. All your siblings in the house, all of you came from the same, in a lot of cases, you came from the same mother and father. So how is another sibling gonna tell you about mommy and daddy or give you some kind of special insight when all of you came from the same parents? All of us, not Minister Farrakhan, not Elijah Muhammad or Malcolm or Had Tubman or Jesse Jackson or whoever, why do they have a special connection? Why do, <laughs> whoo, man. I'm like DMX. I'm about to lose my mind up in here, up in here. <laughs> Whoa. Why do they have a special connection to God? And God is the parent. Why do I have to listen to Farrakhan? Why do I have to listen to T.D. Jakes? What makes them so damn special? It sounds like your God is playing favoritism. And some parents do. They favor one child over another. What kind of parent does that? That's favoritism. That's not fair. And some of you have actually gone through that. The mother and the father favor your brother or sister over you for whatever reason. You don't like that. But when it comes to God, that's acceptable that Moses is special, Jesus is special, Prophet Muhammad is special, all these special folks, what make them so damn special? We all come from the universe. We all come from the most high. We all come from God. Why are these people treated special? Why God can tell Farrakhan, but God can't tell me? What make him special? Why God can give a message to Joe, Joe Osteen 
and not give the message to me. It sounds like favoritism to me. There's nothing special about Angel Snutting Up 7. So don't look to me for that. Whatever I'm talking about, whatever it is, it's already in you. The scripture said that the kingdom of heaven is in you. Whatever you want, it's in you. You just you just don't know how to use your brain. You don't know how to think for yourself. You're lazy. You want to lay your ass in the nest so somebody else can take care of you. So when you screw up, oh, it, Farrakhan, I was following Farrakhan. I was following Elijah Muhammad. I was following T.D. Jakes. You can blame somebody. Because you're lazy laying around in the nest. Waiting for somebody to feed you when you should be able to get off your ass and do for yourself. Grown men and women. You're seeking God when the God is you. Once you get once you become an adult, once you become grown, you have to take care of yourself. So there's no, no need to pray to God. You are God. I go get my own. There's no more need to wait for God. I am God. I'm grown. I'm an adult. What do children do? Children have to wait for their parents to get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You wait on your parents to get an allowance. And that's what we do in religion and in spirituality. We wait to get something from somebody, God or spirit. We wait on them to give to us because we, we refuse to grow up and get it on our own. We're still blind, deaf, and dumb. We, we are still a baby bird in the nest that can't fly. In the nest. You're scared to leave the nest because you want to blame somebody because you can't fly. You want to blame somebody because you can't find food and water and do nothing for yourself. Mama! That's your original prayer, is mama. And some of y'all still doing it. You need mama and daddy. Jesus, oh Allah, oh the most high, you need a parent. Somebody to beg, somebody to look out for you. Because you don't understand your own connection to life, to the universe. Even God, is getting his or her power from somewhere. And we're all connected. So I don't need you, I can bypass God and get connected to the source wherever God got his power from. Because clearly this God is corrupt, looking for slaves, looking for somebody to exploit, lazy and trifling. Before we was born, everything that we need in life was already here waiting for us. Before we even came into existence, it was already here. There's no evidence that some God or Most High created all of this.
speculation and belief. And you talk about it like you know. You don't know. You repeating a lie that somebody else told you, told us from thousands of years ago. We don't know. But we talk like we know. You don't know. I'm not going to let you come here and talk about God and spirits and the fifth dimension. You don't know. So that make you a liar. There are those who talk about aliens. There's other life on other planets. So what? What they got to do with you? There was a time on this planet we didn't know other, other types of human beings existed. Right or wrong? We didn't know and we didn't give a damn. There are, look, When I was a child, the only thing that existed was the state of Mississippi. I heard about Illinois. I heard about California. I heard about Texas. My reality was Mississippi. Until I come in contact with another state some kind of way, my reality is only Mississippi. It doesn't make any difference if there's life on Mars or Saturn or whatever else in the universe has nothing to do with me. Who cares? These animals on this planet don't give a damn about animals that live on other continents or deep under the ocean. It's no concern of theirs unless they come in contact with it. Here you are talking about aliens. You ain't never seen a damn alien. You don't know. You talking about life and you never see. You talking about spaceships you never seen. Just foolishness. And you clown your mind with all this garbage. That's why you still in the nest. That's why you can't move nowhere. With all your knowledge and scholarship, you're stunted in your progress as a human being. There was a long time the Europeans didn't know that the Native American people existed or the African. They only knew Europe and vice versa. Who knows how long everybody been on this planet? But if you don't know anything about them, so what? That's not part of your reality even though they exist. Even if there is life on other planets. So what? It don't mean anything. But we come on and make videos like we know what the hell we talking about. You don't. It's real sickening. Wasting time and energy and brain power on something that don't mean a damn thing. So what if there's alien? Now, Captain Kirk on Star Trek, he's actually meeting these space aliens or whatever. That's part of his reality in fiction. It has nothing to do with us. You never met God. You never met this most high. Y'all sound so crazy talking about the most high and fifth dimension. You never been there. You're lying. It's a waste of time. You feel comfortable being in the nest. 
feel good rhetoric. You are you are a baby bird that's blind with no feathers, just laying in the nest. What what happens to baby birds that's blind and can't do a damn thing for themselves? Laying in the nest. Snakes can eat you. Raccoons can eat you. Other birds can eat you. You are easy prey for anybody. And that's what you see in the American so-called Negro here. Anybody can eat us. Anybody can do whatever they want to to us. Because we refuse to grow. There was a, um, some of you, I'm going to say this in conclusion. Some of you are familiar with uh, martial arts movies. And this is a common theme in many of these martial arts movies. The father was killed and the father told the son, which was a child, avenge my death. Okay. Now the child has no idea how he or she is going to avenge the father's death. The mother brings the child a book of Kung Fu written by the father. The problem, woo! See, oh man. The problem here is that the book that was written by the father is all torn up and tattered. So the child is wondering how am I going to learn these martial arts? And the book that my father wrote is it, 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 all torn up to shit. Woo! We're going to say this and get out of here, y'all. Now, you should know where I'm going with this. You should know where I'm going with this. We don't believe in God here. We don't believe in the Quran. We don't believe in the Bible. We don't believe in this, these religious books. However, You cannot ignore wisdom. You cannot ignore intelligence, no matter the vessel. So there is wisdom in the Bible. There is wisdom in the Quran. And these books was given to us, but they are torn and tattered like the book that was given to this young boy to learn martial arts to avenge his father. The boy has to put the pieces together and have the brain power to put it together in a manner so that he can learn martial arts to avenge his father. He has no idea what his father's trying to do here, but he has to use his brain like a puzzle to bring, bring it together so I can learn this martial arts so I can avenge my father's death. We are the Bible without being the Bible. We are the Quran without being the Quran. We take the Bible, we take the Quran, 
put it together, put the pieces together, this, these torn books, and now we're ready to go to war. We took all the fantasy and the fictions out of it, and we embraced the reality of things, and now we're ready to avenge our father's death. We're ready to go for our liberation. We're ready to go for our freedom. We're ready to make the oppressors, those who put our people in this condition, to bring them to justice. And so the young boy or girl take the tattered pieces of this, of this father's books and come up with the martial arts and we know it's not ex it's not exactly what the father really wanted, but because that child is using their brain, their own imagination, put it together like a puzzle. Okay, this worked. Let me flip this around. You come up with a style that's beyond and better than what the father originally gave you. Woo, man! Did you hear what I said? The child come up with a martial art better than what the father had left in the book. And that's what we have here. That's what we have here. The reality's temple. The pieces of a tattered life, tattered books, tattered mindset, brought together better than Mar Marcus Garvey, better than Elijah Muhammad, better than Clarence 13X, better than the Black Panther Party, better than all of it. Here we are, grown, flapping our wing, ready to get out the nest, ready to take care of business. You can't comprehend. You can't comprehend. We're more righteous than you are. We're more spiritual than you are. We're more pro-black than you are. We're more pan-African than you are. If you understood Operation Exodus Mississippi is pan-Africanism, you dumbass. You don't understand because you're laying in the nest and your knowledge is limited to 1930. You make a mistake seeking God out self, outside of yourself. You're God. Let there be light and you turn it on. You don't sit around waiting for somebody else to turn it on. Let there be light. You turn it on. And that's what we are about here. And you will see how correct I am when you decide and others listen and decide to join us. We're going to show you how it's supposed to be done. It could have been done a long time ago, but the majority of y'all still in the nest taking a poop on yourself. Waiting for somebody to bring you bugs and worms laying in the nest. When you, when you are a grown ass bird, stop being scared, get the hell out the nest, flap your wings and fly. Ain't no church, ain't no mosque, ain't no synagogue got a damn thing on us. We the best. None of this stuff out here can touch us. None of it. We are freedom, justice, and equality. We are the liberation. Get on the soul train. That's your best bet. Get on the soul train. Open up your mind to the universe. Stop eating out of somebody else's bowl.
Get your own damn bowl. Why you think their ice is colder than your ice? Why you think their fire is hotter than your fire? The hell with them people. They just want you to be their damn slave. Look up to them. No, you are an individual and you deserve your freedom. Get your piece of the pot. You don't have to bow down. Uh, oh, Allah. Oh, the honorable minister. The, Lord, the hell with that. I don't want to hear nobody that come to this platform talk about, oh, Angel Snub Nub Snub. The hell with Angel Snub Nub Snub. I want you to get your own. Get your piece of the pot. Live your life. You don't depend on me or nobody. Whether I'm living or dead, you know how to move forward. Fly out the nest and enjoy life for a change. Stop letting people be, make you their damn slave. Free your mind. And when you free your mind, the rest will follow. They won't come here with their nonsense. You can't touch us. We are well beyond your comprehension because we are grown. We're adults. We are God. And you're still a child of God. You're still begging the most high. You're still begging Jesus. You're still begging Allah. When we have become Allah, we are Jesus. We are the most high. And we don't have to smoke crack to get high. I get high every time I come here and talk to you. Talk to us. Absolutely. What the hell it look like for us to pray to God? We are the God. If we can't get it done, it won't get done. You want an easy way out. You want to lay in a, a nest with your lazy ass and still wait for your mama and, and daddy to bring you worms. Instead of being a grown ass bird that you are, flap your wings and fly and do your own thing. I don't want to live with my father in his house of many mansions. I want my own match. I want my own space. No, you want your own slave cabin in your masa house. That's what you really want. You just want a, a slave master to keep taking care of you. We don't want God to take care of us. We don't want a slave master to keep take care of us. We are adults. We want freedom, liberation, or nothing at all. All this nonsense, all this tiddlywink stuff that these people are doing, that's just a show. If we don't do it big, and if we don't do it together, we might as well not do anything at all. So your history museum is baloney. Your African school is baloney. Your, your, your car lot is baloney. All this little tiddlywink stuff that these people are doing is a bunch of baloney. It might help you and your hungry ass family. It's not going to do nothing for me. It's not going to do nothing for Mello and Razzy and Z-Mad and, and the Deacon and those on this platform, those who are listening. It's not going to help you none. Stand up and be God. Don't talk about God. Stand up and be God. That's why they can't touch us. Because they are slaves. And we're God. So with that said. I am so happy. 
But at the same time, it's very sad that we had to experience what we call the purge. But even in your scripture, it talks about the separation of the wheat and the tarot. It talks about the separation between mother and daughter. It talks about the separation between father and son. So there has to be a separation. There has to be a separation from those who want to grow up and become God from those who want to stay a servant. We're going to be God. We are the gods. No more slavery for us. No more servitude for us. When we stand and say, let there be light, we turn it on. We're not going to pray. Oh, can you, can you, uh oh, my lights is out. My lights is out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Farrakhan. Oh, uh, Muhammad. Oh, oh, Joe Osteen. Oh, can, can, can let there be, can, can y'all give me some light? Uh, beggars. Let there be light. Turn it on your damn self. You don't have to bow down to them. Wherever their knowledge come from, whatever their connection to the universe come from, you are connected the same way they are. Phil Fox, well said, Nub Seven. Scripture lie like an MF. People, the dumb, deaf, blind. And a sheep, sheep herd. No more fear, no more slavery, no more BS. We must take accountability for our stuff. That's right. That's right. It's time that we take accountability for ourselves. As the grown men and women, we claim we are. So on that note, I thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And if you did not hear the full video lecture, then of course, you're always welcome to uh, listen to the broadcast later on. Also, I don't know if I did a good job or not, but I have another sniffy episode at 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, later on, 8, 8 p.m. Central Time. I feel good about it, but then I don't. But hey, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but Sniffy, I'm going to have Sniffy at 8, 8 p.m. Uh, tonight. Sniffy is going on a date with... <laughs> We miss flip flopper. <laughs> so check that out. Also, also you can check out our uh, our autobiography. Well, subscribe to Mississippi Campaign. I am going to later on this week. I'm going to have a, a question and answer period for uh, the Mississippi campaign. I want to ask us some questions. I mean, everything is really simple, but we want to just go ahead and make some clarifications and things of that nature. We want to do that. So uh, subscribe to Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. If you have any questions, if you have an inquiry, I'm going to do a special uh, video live stream just for that. You can always email. You can always present. Don't keep the questions inside yourself. Bring it to us because we don't know it all. We don't know everything. But bring the questions so that we can clarify for our, for our sake as well as yours. Also, also, if you want to, 
our autobiography is now available on Amazon in the grip of monsters being falsely accused of stalking serial killer Anthony Myler Ross. Again, my book is not to try to make money. My book is being offered to those who support this platform. I could care less if all those other dingbats, if they get the book or not. I really don't give a damn. I could care less. But it's, a, it's available. Yeah, we got Sniffy late on tonight at 8 p.m. I don't know if I did a good job with Sniffy, but I just had to put Sniffy out there one more, one more time just, just to see. I, I don't know. You win some, you lose some. I, I don't know. I'll let y'all be the judge. Plus, it's free. It's not like I'm getting paid to do Sniffy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, dingbats. <laughs> you know, your best bet is to keep your dingbat happy ass away from us. Hey, uh, they go Alquan. This man is full of jive. He says, nobody. He said, nobody wants the pieces of that trash book. Absolutely. D didn't, 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 didn't the troll hear what I just said? It's not meant for, for everybody. Absolutely. These guys kill me. <laughs> they so stupid. I just said it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. These people are supposed to be so smart and they are the dumbest on the planet. That's why the white man and everybody else kicking you in your ass and you cannot progress because y'all stupid. Just stupid. And they want us to be like them. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, Deacon, if we don't laugh, they'll make us cry. I, these folks is just children. Children. They're silly. Silly people. Thank you very much, uh, Soul Brother 85. Thank you so much. How how are you, how are you gonna call something trash? You haven't even read it, you don't even know what it's about. Yeah. Unfortunately, can't stay away. Can't stay away. But that's all good. It's all good. They cannot stay away because they know that we are reality. They know we are the truth. They are just too weak to accept the truth. They're too weak. And they have believed they have believed, hey, how you doing? They believe in their nonsense. They feel embarrassed to let it go. So instead of being right, they'd rather be wrong. Because they too, they too embarrassed to confess and admit, uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm wrong. In my book, there's things I put in the book I've never told nobody. But I'll be dead maybe in the next, from now to 10, 20 years. So what? We all can relate. It is what it is. Uh, the troll says, when are you calling off the Mississippi campaign? You already said it was an idea and not a command, so it is nothing. 
Um, let me put up. Let me talk to the troll real quick. I'm gonna invite him. Come on, troll. Come on, we're gonna talk real quick before I get out. I, I got a little, I got a few minutes, and you can come. We know there's Alquan. Come on, troll, because I don't have time to read all your garbage. There you go, troll. Come on over here. I got like five, ten minutes. Come on over here. Come on, Cletus. Come on. Come on, Cletus. There you go. Come on. They want our attention. Let's let's give them some attention. Damn. Because I don't have time to read all your, your comments like that. Yeah. Come on now. I'm going to give them a few minutes. Have a good laugh real quick and we're going to get out of here. <laughs> right. Come on, Cletus. Okay, here we go. How you doing there, sir? Come on. What's up? Oh, What's up? Oh my God! I'm like, I'm actually on the air. My God. God don't have nothing to do with it, sir. <laughs> my Lord. <laughs> Lord don't have nothing to do with it. We don't do that either. Well, goddamn. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, uh, all right, let, now, uh, my name is Cletus, as you can see. No, you're Alquan. Come on, you can't even change your voice. Come on, Alquan, what you want? Uh, here's the situation. Uh, in a prior broadcast, you laid it out. Uh, you said that the Mississippi campaign is something that you can just throw out there to the people. If they take it, cool. If they don't, then it is what it is. Now, you've been trying to force it onto the people by the way you say the Mississippi campaign is the only thing that's good for you. It's uh, something that will change your lives. So the question is, man, I disrespect to start getting up and walking and shit. <laughs> I mean, this is the heightened disrespect right here. So hopefully the people, well, there's few fans in, in those uh, troll mods, maybe they'll hear, uh, but you said that the people will take it or leave it. And that's as far as it's going to go. If that's as far as it's going to go, why did you keep trying to uh, uh, harass people into accepting the, the Mississippi campaign? If as far as it's going is, if the people take it in Mississippi, they do or they don't. I mean, there's nothing more to really discuss because you said you're not going to Mississippi. You made that clear. And a lot of times you say, if, someone asked you about the Mississippi campaign, you uh, defer to Maurice Muhammad, which of course is not you because he's not promoting the Mississippi campaign. So the question is, what's the whole point? All right. Well, first of all, sir, <clears throat> I did say that you can take it or leave it the Mississippi campaign. I did say that because it's not up to me. We present an idea and either the people accept it. And that's that's for not only for me, that's for anything. Anything, anybody like Tariq Nasheed is putting out and he wants people to support his museum. Either they support his museum or they don't. So um, we put something out here Either you either you want to embrace it or you don't. Now, as far as forcing, I'm not forcing nobody to do a damn thing because ain't nobody going to force nothing on me. I'm not forcing nobody. However, if you want to put up your ragged ass plan that don't work, ain't never worked up against the Mississippi idea, yes, we're going to shoot it down. Yes, we're going to do that because you've had a hundred years since the time of Marcus Garvey all types of ideas, all types of strategy, all types of things that you've been doing way before 2018, February of 2018, with the inception or the creation of this plan called the Mississippi Campaign, Operation Exodus Mississippi. You've had all this time before us and you 
and you can't get nothing going. So that's not my fault. So since those things aren't working, a wise person, instead of trying to put a round peg or a square peg in a round hole, you would think that you would try to find something different in order to get that job done. But you want to continue to be silly, continue to be insane, because what is it, the definition of insanity, to continue to do something expecting a different resolve. That's insanity. You keep doing the same stuff, believing in the same God, the same stuff, keep doing the same thing, but you expect a different result. That's not going to work. But I'm not here to force nothing on nobody. If you think that you're better than this idea, I challenge what you're talking about, and I'm going to show you that what you're talking about has already been done. It failed. It don't work. Now, what you need to do is revise it. But, I, but you don't see people revising these things. They're doing the same thing Elijah Muhammad did, the Black Panthers did, uh, the Black Liberation Front, whatever, all that stuff in the past. They all stuck in the 1960s, 1940s, 1950s, you know, stuck. You're not going to get anywhere being stuck like that. And also, I want to add this. The Mississippi campaign is created where you don't have to give up those things that you're talking about. What we're saying is bring all this under one umbrella and take your place because like Seth is, the nation of Islam is proven to be able to uh, to uh, uh, maintain an educational system that was good. They produced a lot of geniuses out of the nation of Islam. And there are other people that do have their specialty. So we bring all our talents together. Everybody found their place, but we do it under one umbrella, one purpose, one vision, one goal. And let's get the job done. All this separated tiddling wing stuff and everybody wants to get the credit for things. No, why don't we get the credit? Instead of, see, when you do the Mississippi campaign, we as a people get the credit, not the nation of Islam, no certain groups, no certain individual, because I'm what the way it's set up, we've done this. I'm not gonna be able to say, well, you know, now you can say that Angel Snup Number no. Seven brought us the idea, but as far as getting the job done, no, we did it. All the people, the Muslims, the Christians, the agnostics, wherever you find yourself in life, we done it. We done this. So I'm not now, trying to force, I don't want to force nothing on nobody because I don't want nothing forced on me. I'm just saying that this is the better out of all the, this is the best option that we have. I don't see. It. Now, if there's something better, please show it to me. I would examine it. And if it have any kind of validity, uh, whatever, I'll be happy. Man, I have during my 45, 50 years within the black conscious community or whatever you want to call it, I have supported the Moorish Science Temple. I've supported the Hebrew Israelites. I supported, of course, the Nation of Islam. I supported Christians. So why don't why can't they support me? Why can't they support me? All right. Now, uh, here's the thing. When you say force, when I say force, what I mean by that is you're basically harassing people, or you have harassed people. Join this Mississippi campaign. What's better for you? There ain't nothing better for you than this. It, it can't work unless you try it. You know, that's that's basically harassing and trying to force people. How is that? People do that all the time with Coca-Cola. Try Coca-Cola. <laughs> they want you to try my product. My product is better than other people's product. But they don't say you better try this product. What else is there? What is there? So I'm There's asking Pepsi. There's Pepsi. There? There's Pepsi. But I'm asking you, what else is there? Oh, okay. Well, you just mentioned things that have been tried before in the past. Let me tell you what has been tried before in the past. It has to a degree been successful, but still unsuccessful. And that is Atlanta. No, no, wait a minute, no, hold up. No, we want to know what has been tried in the past and is working right now. Like I just said, the city of Atlanta, that's a, a similar thing to the Mississippi campaign. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's the city of Atlanta. I'm talking about the take control of a state. Okay, a state or a city uh, is a similar uh, no, analogy. It's similar. No, it's yes, not. It yes, yes, it no, is. It's not. 
One is easier. One is much easier than if I wanted to do a city, I could have started with East St. Louis, Illinois, which is 90, 95% black. I don't want a city. That's too little. We've well, already you have to start. You have to start city by city. You, you can't just go into Mississippi and take over the state. Nobody knows who the hell you are. Impossible. Yes, you can. If you got the numbers, see, because you don't you don't know what to do. I know what to do. Well, if you knew what to do, how come it's come, come not in progress if you know what to do? Because people like you won't help. Oh, why do, why do I need help? You're the master. No, I'm not a master of anything. <laughs> and, plus, and plus, that's not my job. That's not well, my job. How's, not it, not your, how's it not your job <laughs> if you're the one proposing it and trying to force it down? Again, our I'm not trying to force nothing on nobody. Again, if the people feel that's what they don't want to do, then so be it. But when they say so be it, then you say you people need to do this. You people need to help us. We got to do this. You can't do it unless we try it. But see, you're, you're not trying. You haven't tried it. Right. But people have tried it in Atlanta. They tried no, it they in Detroit. Not tried. No, they have not tried uh, it in Atlanta. Okay. Explain to me what they have not done in Atlanta that they uh, could do. They in have not, Atlanta is a, is a city. They have not tried to take control of the city. It's there's the no there's no vision. There's no purpose. There's no goal. There's there's no unity in Atlanta. But it's black rule for the most part. No, it's not black rule. White folks rule Atlanta. No, I said for the most part, representative. No, no there's black faces in certain positions. Right. And that, and, that would be the, and that would be the case black if, people, if, and that would be the case for a Mississippi campaign. Atlanta. That would be the case for a Mississippi campaign. But my point, let me make my point. My point is that even with Atlanta, uh, you have black people that have made money in Atlanta. But you also have still not high. Money. Well, but about listen, listen, money. listen. Let me uh, let me explain what I'm talking about. But we're you not still, talking. Look, you don't understand. We I do understand. It's no, just that don't. you don't want to listen to anybody no. but yourself. I'm not going to listen to you. Right. A city. I'm talking about taking control of a it's state. It's the same analogy. It's not the same. Yes, it is. It's taking control of something. But my point is not even oh, no. about that. No, my, man. Li listen. No, See, man. this is what I mean by forcing. A grown man, no, you're not listening because you're, no, you're not listening. I'm trying to get it out. You, how are you going to explain something that I'm not, I didn't even finish talking you're about? You're not listening. You're not listening. There's a difference between a grown man and a boy. They are, there are similarities. One is grown, one is a child. Right, I understand that. You cannot compare a state to a city. Can you listen to what I have to say first and then you can uh, uh, explain yourself? The no, point. I've answered one question. That's it. Uh, I'm see, just man, city can't take the heat. The man here. can't take the heat. If you no, can't take, you can't dish it because out. I'm can't talking about taking control of a state. And you, you, can can you, can, you can abuse women, but you can't stand up to men. No, I sure can't. No, you can't. This man is cowardly. No. This that's man ain't no leader. This man ain't no leader. Leader. Oh, that's, that's right. So, anyway, I just wanted to play with him for a few minutes. We talking about take control of a state, and this cat. Keep talking about a, a city that black folks don't even don't run. Black people are managers. Black people are managers in these cities. That's all they are. They don't control nothing. They have no vision. They have no plan. They have no goal. They have nothing. And how you doing there, Jeffrey? Keep doing what y'all doing. Why you keep bothering me? <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to argue with you about a, a, a city that we don't control. Those black people don't control no city. We talk about take control of a state. We're not talking about managing anything. We want to make our own laws. See, that's the thing. That's what gets me. The, you know, these folks, these folks think small, can't even comprehend taking control of a state, have no idea, don't know the tactic, don't know the plan.
They're not on our level. They, they have a slave mindset. We are gods. We're not servants. Absolutely. Alquan, you're entitled to your opinions. And I entertain your opinions. You cannot compare a city to trying to take care of a state. And we do not control Atlanta. We don't control any of these cities. We're just management. They set up nothing. They, they've done nothing. I just want to entertain. We are, I already know. What, you know, and why are they bothering us? We only get 10 views a video. We only have, uh, we only, we only have 10 subscribers. Why is this man obsessed with us? Since we don't know what we're doing, and then we don't know what it's all about, why you keep messing with us for? Yes, they definitely have the slave mindset ingrained in their abused-minded, hard-headed <laughs> minds for their master, their daddy of society. You're not even on our level. These folks, these folks are not even on our level. Jeffrey says, opinions don't mean uh, we need working ideas. Absolutely. Keep talking about Atlanta. We don't control no Atlanta. It's not the same thing. Crazy stuff. But this is what I mean. And this is what our talk was about today. Don't talk about God. Become a God. Become a God. So on that note, we're out of here. Check out Sniffy at 8 p.m. Uh, put down your comments. I don't know if I did a good job with Sniffy this time or not. Y'all let me know. Uh, I, might have to, I might have to go in, into hiding <laughs> after this latest Sniffy episode. But it's up, to, it's up to you. If you want Sniffy to keep coming back, I'll bring Sniffy back. If you don't, I have to let Sniffy die. On that note, thank you again. Thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, a little bit of your time. Thank you so much. Thank you to the deacons, Jeffrey, uh, 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 the, the deacons, Jeffrey, Mello, and those in the chat room, those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later on. And uh, when I know it's Alquan, I think I'm not gonna mess with him no more. He's uh, I'm not gonna mess with that that cat. Even for laughs, I'm not gonna mess with him no more. I'm not messing with Alquan no more. If you see me mess with Alquan and we know that it's Alquan, please kick me in the face. <laughs> We're not gonna mess with that. Let let him keep doing whatever he's doing in Atlanta whatever he's doing. You cannot comprehend what we're talking about. You're not on our level. Nobody is on our level. You have all this scholarship and knowledge, but you don't know how to apply it. <laughs> right, it's a little, it's a little entertaining.
but it's also sickening because I mean, I don't know. I can't expect everybody to be like us. These folks are just, they out, they don't, they have no, they can't comprehend. They can only comprehend simple old stuff. They can't comprehend new strategy, a new way of looking at life. And I can't do it. I can't babysit you. I can't babysit you. I can't take your little hand. I can't give you similar. I can't sit you on my knee and baby fire you. This is the work for grown men. This is the work for gods. This is the work for grown women. Children can't do this. This Alquan is a child. He thinks he's some kind of aboriginal whatever. Living out there in La La Land some damn where. Fiction and fantasy. We don't do that here. He has all this knowledge, but can't apply a damn thing. <laughs> right, he's our devil's advocate. Absolutely. And I'm a grumpy old man. I can't, it's hard, it's hard for me to be patient like I used to be. I, I can't do it no more. A few years ago, I could tolerate that type of stuff. I'm too grumpy. I, I can't do it no more. Either you, we gonna do it. Either you're gonna do it or you don't. If you're not gonna do it, take your happy ass on. I'm not trying to convince you to do a damn thing. Keep doing your thizzy. Yeah, he's not gonna join us. He's too arrogant. He wants to be the leader. He wants people to follow him. But he has nothing to offer. He has nothing to offer. There's a reason why he hides behind a picture. But anyway, on that note, let's get out of here. Enjoy the rest of our day. Uh, again, thank you to those in the chat room. Even thank you to Alquan. Thank you for those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later. Uh, I am open to those who are who, who can talk like they have a little sense. I can't talk to this troll. We've been dealing with this troll for years. I don't know why this person just don't go on and handle their business. Go do, go do you. Why you keep messing with us for years? Go do what you feel you need to do. That don't work. That don't work. <laughs> so, we out of here. Again, our, uh, our autobiography Probably so, probably so. We're very tenacious, we're very relentless here. And we're very aggressive. And we are very confident that what we got can work. Very confident. Nope. No, he can't. Nobody can. We got the right stuff. We know we got the right stuff. We know what the wrong stuff is. Oh, there goes Sister, Sister Ann. Well, we bringing this to a, we bringing this to a, a, a to an end, uh, Soul Sister Ann, Nana, we've been on the air since 2.30. We got two hours and almost a half in. 
We even had a visit from a <laughs> from Alquan, the faceless troll. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to give them a little respect for trying to listen. But these guys are caught up. They're caught up in the past. And they are they are racist in their mindset. He's a racist in training. He has a racist mentality. And that's another reason why he can't comprehend what the Mississippi campaign is all about because he's a racist. Gay Nollywood Jr. is a racist. And a lot of these folks, they're racist in training. That's why they can't comprehend. They also cannot see the future. They're not visionaries. They want what they want when they want it. And that's not how life works. You put something in motion and then you might not see it become a reality. You'll be dead and gone. But what you put in motion, if you do it right, it would become a reality. That's why we live in the United States of America. This was an idea. This was a vision. And most of the people that put it together did not live to see all this. Thank you very much, Sister Ann. Now, I don't know what this is. I got to get rid of this here, too. Yeah, we hope that you're doing OK, Sister Ann. She putting in all our advertisement. <laughs> she, Sister Ann is letting you know that the autobiography is, is available. Check it out if you want to. The link is in the description box of this video. The link is in the chat room. And Sister Ann also wants us to donate to the platform if you want to. The link is in the description box. The link is also in the chat room, courtesy of Sister Ann. She is also giving the greetings to the deacons. That's good news. That's good news, Sister Ann. She says she's still kicking. I'm trying. I'm trying to kick myself. I'm trying to kick here myself. I think we had a real nice talk today. I do too. I feel good about our talk today. Put in your comments real quick. And uh, everybody wanted to give the greetings to our sister. It's all right, sister. It's all gravy. We know you was here in spirit. <laughs> of course, you can watch the uh, rebroadcast. And again, we got Sniffy, Sniffy Johnson at 8 p.m. right here, right here on this on this uh, on this channel. Our autobiography is available now in the grip of monsters being falsely accused of stalking serial killer Anthony Mylon Ross.
That's available on Amazon. You don't have to apologize. You, have to, you don't have to apologize. Sister Ann, you all you always here. Either physically or in spirit. It's all great. We know that you're here. Yes, we are. We're much better without a whole lot of folks. I feel better. So all those that gather here now, we are all on the same page. I hope that all the people I hurt their, their feelings, I hope all the people I hurt their feelings, I hope all of them are gone now. That's good. Yes, yes, Melo. Thank you so much, Deacon. Yes, it does, Sister Ann. It, it sure does. It was a hurtful, it was a hurtful thing, but unfortunately, we gotta go through, we gotta go through it a lot. That's just life. That's just life. We know that we got it going on and we're going to keep rolling. We're going to keep this train on the tracks and just keep rolling. It can only get better. And that's what we're going to do. Thank you so much for your support, Soul Brother 85. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Peace, respect, and soul power. Is there any? Any questions or anything anybody else want to say? We're going we gonna to call it a day. And make sure you let me know what you think about the latest Sniffy episode. <laughs> I don't feel real good about it, but that's because I'm a perfectionist. And I, didn't, I don't really feel that. But, it, I mean, it might be all great. It's all good. I sure will. As long as I have life, I'm going to keep this train on the tracks. And don't forget our brother Talil. He's going to be there with me. Keep this train on, on the tracks. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us today. But brother Talil is, uh, is with us. Come on, they ain't work. Look like this thing to stop working. I can't put no more comments on the screen. Like it stop working. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. It's very very hot this week. I I don't know. Sister Ann says she don't like sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> she said, personally, I don't like sniffing. I don't care. <laughs> why, why you don't like sniffing? You don't do no uh, uh, coke thing. <laughs> Sister Ann don't like that cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Supposed to be like almost 100 degrees all all week long. My air conditioner is catching hell, so I I don't know. I don't know. 
like they say in religion, if God calls me to talk to you, I will come. <laughs> <laughs> she said Sniffy reminds her of an uncle she just blocked <laughs> a cocaine a drunk a drunkard yeah <laughs> yeah so I enjoyed the live stream and even though a lot of folks showed up a little later, but it's all gravy. I enjoyed the live stream. Check out the rebroadcast. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Does <laughs> oh, the answer? He's a, he's a drunk. <laughs> well, Sniffy is just our comedy relief. Just something, just somebody character to play with. That's all. Have a little fun with. That's all. Two and a half hours in, we're done. And again, check out our rebroadcast, The Mistake Seeking God Outside of Yourself. Let's stop praying to God, talking about God. Let us be God. So when we say, let there be light, We turn it on. We don't ask nobody else. Do our thing. Absolutely. So on that note, jot down your comments, subscribe, like, share, all that kind of good stuff. Check out the example, the sample uh, of our autobiography. Check that out. I mean, if you don't like something, the least you can do, they give you a free sample. Check out the free sample. That's the least you can do. It's free. And I have to know you. I have to know you. You donate $5 or more to the cash out, I will send you a rough, the rough draft. $2, $5, or whatever. I was. I have to know you. The reason why the 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 uh, the price is so high on the autobiography, so people like Alquan and others, if they want to know or see the autobiography, they're gonna have to really pay for it. Piece of trash. If you're not that interested, then go about your business. All right. Okay, as Don Cornelius used to always say, as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000.